Good morning and welcome to our worship this morning coming from Latham Park Chapel for a change. We thought we'd come out on a beautiful Sunday morning to this wonderful setting which um, for those who uh, are interested is available for um, retreats and if you want to know more about that then do contact one of the wardens here. My name is Stuart, I'm one of the clergy and we'll be joined by Pauline, our vicar, a bit later as well as a couple of members of Latham Congregation who will be reading and praying for us. As ever, we hope you enjoy the service and we hope you feel close to God as we worship him together today. And as we prepare to worship, let us open our hearts and minds to receive God into our lives as we pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for journeying with us through this pandemic and through our lives. We pray that we may know you in our hearts. We may learn to love you more. And we may be giving of each other in our love and service to all, today and forever. Amen. And remembering that there are things that we do wrong, let us open our hearts and confess to God hearing the beauty of his creation, the things that we have done, that we are sorry for. Lord, we are truly sorry for the times that we have turned away from you, for the times we have forgotten your word, for the times we have forgotten your love for us, for the times we have forgotten to show your love to one another. Help us, support us, strengthen us and forgive us today and forever. And we know that the almighty God who has loved beyond all bounds who is gracious without mercy, forgives us and sustains us today and forever. Amen. The reading is taken from Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 to 17, the Ten Commandments. God spoke, and these were his words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, where you were slaves. Worship no God but me. Do not make for yourselves images of anything in heaven or on earth, or in the water under the earth. Do not bow down to any idol or worship it, because I am the Lord your God, and I tolerate no rivals. I bring punishment on those who hate me and on their descendants down to the third and fourth generation. But I show my love to thousands of generations of those who love me and obey my laws. Do not use my name for evil purposes. For I, the Lord your God, will punish anyone who misuses my name. Observe the Sabbath and keep it holy. You have six days in which to do your work, but the seventh day is a day of rest dedicated to me. On that day, no one is to work, neither you, your children, your slaves, your animals, nor the foreigners who live in your country. In six days, I, the Lord, made the earth, the sky, the sea and everything in them but on the seventh day I rested that is why I the Lord blessed the Sabbath and made it holy respect your father and your mother so that you may live a long time in the land that I am giving you do not commit murder do not commit adultery do not steal 
Do not accuse anyone falsely. Do not desire another man's house. Do not desire his wife, his slaves, his cattle, his donkeys, or anything else that he owns. This is the word of the Lord. I wonder if your attitude to being told what to do has altered over this last 12 months. I wonder if it sat comfortably with you or you interpreted the rules with some flexibility. The idea of being told what to do or what not to do is something we may want to rebel against. And this rebellion may or may not be moderated by the knowledge of the person or the organisation who is giving the orders or the motivation behind the rules. Sometimes the consequences of rebelling are obvious. If you ignore a no entry sign, you may well hit a car coming towards you head on. But if you ignore the code rules and hook someone when no one's looking, will there be any consequences? How much is there a rebel in each one of us? How many of us set rules, maybe for our children, which we know is for their own good, even if they rebel against the rules or push the boundaries as far as they're able to? God gave his commands to his people for their own good. Or let me rephrase that, God gave them to us for our own good. Does it feel like that? The reality is that the Ten Commandments are there for our own good. And if we reject them, then we will suffer consequences. It may sound or feel like a list of thou shalt nots, but they break down to three logical sections. Peace with God peace with my family, and peace with my neighbour. Peace with God. Then God spoke all these words. These words were spoken by God. We have a God who wants to reveal himself to us. They carry his authority and ensure the continuing relevance of his words. Much as we might like to, we cannot decide which parts of God's law we would like to keep. Because these commands come from God, we, as his people, are obliged to uphold them. Not just those that fall in with the belief system of the world around us, or with our own moral compass. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. He is a God who is active in human history. He is concerned about people. He refers to the way he has graciously delivered Israel from the slavery of Egypt. And in the Ten Commandments, God reminds his people what he's done for them before outlining how he expects them to live under his rule. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourself an idol. The Jews were a polytheistic culture, one which worshipped many gods. Some of them were gods related to certain areas, for example, the fertility of the crops and cattle. But in contrast, God is sovereign over every area of life. He's the creator of everything, not just a small part. And today we still live in a world of different gods, not necessarily those related to the fertility of crops or cattle, but materialism, consumerism, pleasure seeking. The Ten Commandments are saying nothing should come between us and God. We shouldn't worship any idol, possessions, money, security, status, or anything else that pushes God to one side. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God. Another one prohibiting the name, the using the name of God when making a promise if that promise is not kept. And if someone didn't keep such a promise, it's almost as if that person is denying the reality of God. And we see this continued even today when people are called upon to swear a Bible in a court of law. The Ten Commandments were given to a people who God had delivered from slavery because he loved them. Not because they were more lovable or more moral than any other nation. And these commandments follow the practical demonstration of God's love. Those first ones instruct us how to keep peace with God. And the next ones direct us how to have peace with our families. They need perhaps less explanation, but that doesn't make them any easier to keep. Remember the Sabbath day, honour your father and mother, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery. And breaking any of these undermines family life. Because a family is an environment where we can learn to love 
to receive undeserved love, forgiveness, care, respect and loyalty. It's also an environment we can learn to give and to show love, forgiveness, care, respect and so on. And we can't do this if we fail to rest, to honour and respect each other, if one member of the family is imprisoned for murder or the family torn apart by the betrayal of adultery. And those final commandments relate to peace with our neighbour. And again, perhaps they need less explanation than the ones relating to peace with God. But that doesn't make them any easier to keep. Neighbour means more than just the person living next to us. Indeed, our actions can affect people all around the world. Just think of pollution and CFCs and so on. So neighbour can include everyone. You shall not steal. That's not just about breaking into someone's house and taking their possessions away. Zacchaeus cheated his countrymen by exploiting them and fitting the books. Today, people will steal from their employers by turning up late for work, leaving early, fitting expenses, using the phone for private calls and so on. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbour. Lies and gossip can lead to the killing of someone's reputation or the relationship with others. And as Christians, we're called to turn away from this, to be people of the truth. You shall not covet your neighbour's house, wife, slave, ox, donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbour. How easy or hard is this? We may not have a slave, an ox or a donkey to covet, but that doesn't mean we can ignore this commandment. It's not just about actions, but again, also thoughts and motivation. These Ten Commandments are not a way of earning God's favour. These are the ten best ways, as, in, as Godly Play puts it, the ten best ways, ways of showing that we have received God's undeserved favour. So as we think about the Ten Commandments, the ten best ways to live. Don't be overwhelmed by the apparent prohibitions of them, because they're there because God loves us. That's the message for today. God loves us, cares for us, and wants the best for us. So be encouraged when you hear again these 10 best ways. Let us pray. Dear Lord, at this time of great hardship for many people in the world, let us pray that this pandemic will soon be over and some normality will prevail. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Ten Commandments were given to us to show how to live a better life now and please God forever. Let us pray that we live by these rules and that others in this world will make it a better place by living their lives accordingly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our local community is very precious to us, so let us pray for the staff and children of Latham Park, Greetby Hill and Ormskirt schools. May they return to their classrooms in safety. Our prayers go out to Pauline, Stuart and Lynn for their continued support. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our thanks go out to all the doctors, nurses and care workers who are working long hours to help the sick. We pray that they themselves keep safe. We also pray for all the people who work in shops to keep us fed, delivery personnel, the refuse collectors and many more. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this troubled world, may we reach out to others, for those in Iran, Somalia, Myanmar, Yemen and other countries where there is strife. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the sick and suffering, for the bereaved, especially those known to ourselves, for the lonely and those in care homes unable to see family and friends. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us end with the prayer that Jesus taught us. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So thank you to Pauline for bringing us our word this morning, and for Pauline Kenyon and Len for um, reading and praying for us. We hope you've enjoyed this service. We hope that you feel close to God um, through the worship that we offer. And we know that many of you, like myself, would love to be back actually in the building worshipping. And as we think through how the country is coming into the next stage, uh, the step-by-step -step process out of this pandemic lockdown, then we're thinking around how we can safely reopen the church for worship, which we hope to do um, before Easter, but we will let you know as we go along. Keep an eye on the website and the Facebook page and all of that kind of thing. Again, we rely on your giving. We rely on all of your support for all that we do, not just for us, but for the community that we serve. And it's really important that you continue to engage with that. And above all, we pray that you feel close to God at this time and every time. And so let us close in prayer. Lord, we thank you for bringing us together. We thank you for being on the journey. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for the commandments that you have given us to show us the best way to live our lives for ourselves and the service of others. And we ask today that you bless us, keep us, uphold us and support us in the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen.